Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Guide to for Bioinformatics. In today's video, I am going to show you how to assemble long read data using the tool Fly, and we are going to do this on the Gladi platform. And by the way, I've already covered this same tutorial, but I use the command line version of Fly, so you can also check that video if you are interested. For now, we are doing everything on the Gladi platform, so just make sure to create an account, login. That's what you need to know. All right, so let's start. So first of all, let's get our example data. We need to do that. So the example data, you can find it here. You can also come to this page here. So I'll leave the link to all these pages in the description box. What we need is just that session ID. That's the only thing we need. We are going to import everything here. So we don't need to download or re-upload or what. Everything will be done in a simple manner. So let's get our session ID. We can use this page. I'll leave the link to this page in the description as well. I'll also leave this assertion ID here because that's what we are going to use. All right, so I want you to copy this assertion ID. That's what we need. So I'll right click and I'll copy it. Then I'll move to Galaxy. So when I'm here, I'll create a new history. So when you are here, just click on the plus here. Then you will have a new history camera with the name or name history. So let's edit it and then add our own. So we are going to rename it. I'll say genome assembly fly. That's all that I need. So I'm now going to import the data. So to import, come to the search tools here, this side here. Click it and then search. So I'll show you two approaches to search for. The utility to import the data. So you can just type SRE. When you type SRE, you have a list of tools coming up. You will use the faster download and stretch for it in this queue. But you can also type the full name here. So I can say faster download and extract, etc. So this will also list the tool for me here. All right. So whatever you do, make sure you have this listed for you. Then you can click it. So after clicking, Here's what you get. You get this interface coming up. So make sure the select input type you have SR accession. Then paste your accession ID here. Just paste it. So there's also another way to put the tab to like this problem. I've already covered another tutorial on that also. So check the description. All right. So you just paste it. Just make sure that you are using the right accession ID. That's it. Then just click on run to. So when you click on run to, then Galaxy will begin to import that data for you. So you will have a list of files coming up here. So let's wait for everything to get imported first. Okay, the data has been imported. So we have the outputs here. So you will see four outputs. So let's take a look at them. So we have Paired end data, we have single end data, we have other data, we have Pascal down log. There's a log file. Now let's recap. Let's do a recap. Let's look at our data. So we are dealing with a single end data. All right, so you can find the information here on this page here. It's single. When you come to the ENA, it also tells you it's single. All right, it's Oxford Nanopore. So you may be expecting that we have just a single end data here, but we still have paired end. All right. Now, these are the default outputs. So if it's a single end, then you have the data populated in the single end. If it's paired, then you have it here. If the data has both single end and then paired end data, then you have them populated in their respective collections. All right. So this and then this, these are all data set collections. So data set collections allow multiple data sets to be combined into a single entity. All right. So if you take a look at a single end data, for example, when you click it, all right, you have the file here. So if you had multiple files, all right, so if you had multiple samples, let me just put it that way, then you have all of them listed here. All right. So let's go back. And if you even look at it here, it says a list with one data set. All right. So that is what we just saw here. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the paired end data, it says a list with zero pairs. This is because we are dealing with a single end data. And so there is no paired end data available for that accession ID. So that is why this one will be zero. So we don't need it. So you can remove it. There's also other data. In case there are other data sets, they will be placed here. But here there is none. So we can leave that. We also have the log file, which you can read if you want to look at some stuffs. But I will leave mine. 
So what I'm going to do is to remove those I don't want at the moment. So pair then data, I'll remove it. It's zero by the way. I don't need it. Other data. This one, I don't need it. So I'll just remove that also. So I'll leave these two. So this is going to be the data I'll work with. Okay, now let's do this. Again, let me repeat that this is a data set collection. So if you have multiple files or multiple samples or whatever you want to call it, or multiple data sets, then you have all of them listed here. But for this tutorial, we are using just a single data set. So we will leave it as it is. Okay, now let's proceed. So what we are going to do next is to remove adapters. We are going to perform a basic adapter trimming. So we are going to here to call Porto. I repeat, our next activity is going to be the removal of adapters from this data. This is an, this is an Oxford Nanopore data. So we are going to use a tool called Porchop to do this. Now for Porchop, I've already covered the command line version of that tutorial. And so if you're interested, you can also check the description box for that video. All right. So let's go back to the tools here. So we are going to search for Porchop and then use that for the adapter trimming. So here, just clear this and then just type Porchop. Let's search for it. So we have that here. So this is the Porchop tool. So you have to click it. And then you will have something like this coming up. All right. So here, yeah, because we are dealing with a data set collection, you have to come to this side here. This one here, data set collection. This is single data set. This is multiple data set. This is a data set collection. That's what we are going to do because that is how the data has been structured. So click on data set collection. And when you click it, you have this file here this data set collection this data here you have the name indicator here if you don't see it just click and then select it but that's what will come by the way if that's the only data set collection you have so once you see this you can proceed now with the output format here i will select fastq.gz i want the output to be in this format fastq and gz that means it should be compressed since we are performing basic adapter trimming i'll leave the default settings I will not change anything here. I will just leave them as it is. So what I'm going to do next is to click the run tool to do that. So I'll just click it to run it. So what we will have to do is to wait for port chop to complete its work. So let's do that and then you can proceed. Okay, port chop has completed its work. So we have the output here. Now what you should notice that the data we have, what has been displayed, the trimmed reads and then the raw reads. They are both data set collections. So if you want the actual data, you have to click, okay, and then get the data. So let's start with the port of output. So click it, and then you will have the data shown for you, and then you can click it, and you can come and then download by clicking this icon here to download it. The same applies to the raw reads, this one here. So click, and then click this one, and you can download it. All right, so that's how you have to so you can do that to download the files if you want okay so now we are done with the port up activity now ideally we should have performed quality control repeat ideally we should have performed quality control on the raw data up to this one here to look at the quality before doing the processing so if you have your own data i advise that you do a quality control process the quality i mean it also helps you to understand your data and then you can proceed with the processing all right now after Removing the adapters, you can also filter the reads. For example, you can filter and remove reads that are shorter than a particular threshold. Or you can also filter based on quality. It's up to you. There are a number of criteria. So that's something you can also do. And after doing that and getting your final reads, you can perform quality control on it and then compare with your raw reads and then look at the one which is appropriate for your dance room analysis. But for this tutorial, the focus is to show you how to use fly. So I will skip the other aspects. So what we are going to do next is to perform the genome assembly using fly. This is a long read data, Oxford and Nepal. So we are going to use fly on the Galaxy platform. So again, we are going to use the port up on the port up output because that's what we are going to use. That's what we have processed. So we will proceed with that. So come to the tools section. So this time we are not using port up. We are going to use fly. So search for fly. So F L Y E. 
this will show you fly all right so here what you have to do is just select it and then you have some information here all right so here we have this option here it says multiple data sets here it says data set collection now what we have is a data set collection so we have to select this one here data set collection so if you just uploaded it manually then it will come to this side multiple data sets that's what you see here but ours is data set collections this one here so we have to click it so i'm just emphasizing this again so it's a data set collection so you have to click it so when you click it you have all the data set collections being shown for you so we have our raw data we also have the portrait output we are going to the portrait output so we have to select it now when you select it you can now scroll down to select the other option so here it says mode nanopore ours is nanopore so we have to use that if you have other technologies other sequencing technologies you have to select that quick one but ours is nanopore Pro, so we will just leave it as it is let's just make sure it's selected all right and the number of polish nitration so the number of polish nitration is used to improve the assembly all right so the default is one but you can increase it as well so if you want one two three or whatever you can increase it so you can even start with one and then after getting your genome assembly context your assembly context you can perform quality control and you can also increase the polish nitrogen again to get a new data and then compare after performing qc all right so you can some of these things you have to do experiments you have to do several tests and then pick the best output but for this tutorial i'll leave it at one so that's what you need to know okay so that is it now with the previous version of fly we should have specified the genome size all right so with this current version of fly we don't need to do that so i found this information somewhere here let's go down you'll find it so this is the information so it says genome size estimate is no longer a required option you need to provide an estimate if you send this all right so we don't need to specify that because we are not using this particular mode so that's how it is so we are done so we are going to now run fly to get our assembly so let's run the tool so i'll click here to run it okay so now we have started so let's wait for fly to complete its work okay fly has completed its way so we have the outputs here so there are four outputs so i'll go through all of them so we have the assembly info so you can click it and then you will see the information so we have the context and then your respective lens coverage etc so you can download this file and then use in a special software all right that can also be done but i will not do that for now I'll just keep it i just want to show you what it is and then you can explore yourself we also have these two minus 10 and 9 so these are all assembly graphs all right but from a trend that i saw on the fly gets page they said we have to use this one the graphical fragment assembly that is more recent so if you want to visualize the assembly then you can use this far all right so with the visualization it can help you to understand a number of things for example if let's say you have your data you are expecting both plasmids and chromosomes then you can visualize this assembly graph and then you can look at what has been indicated and then confirm if indeed you have your plasmids and then you have your chromosomes it can also help you to identify possible issues so basically what i'll say is that visualizing the assembly graphs can serve as a quality control so it can help you to evaluate the assemblies and then it can help you to get more information which can be useful if you are interpreting your data that's what i'll say for now so for the visualization of the assembly graphs you can use tools like bandage and of course i'm curious on that so share the discussion box you'll find links to those videos so i have this and this all right we also have the consensus which is the context themselves so this is a fast a file by the way so you can also download and then just look at it all right so we even have the format it says fast so we have the context and then the sequences so we can also do that now with the context or let me just let me just put it this way so after performing your general assembly 
you can also perform quality control. So in other words, you can evaluate the genome assemblies. You can use tools like Quast and then Busco. Now Quast, when you run it, will perform some analysis, will give you some statistics, and then you can use those statistics to decide, or let me just say to evaluate your genome assemblies. All right, so you can also use those same statistics to compare different genome assemblies. For example, you have your fly, you run, and then you specify different pollution iterations. Okay, so you have different files and you can compare. So by running Quast and getting your analysis done, you can compare what you have for each of these runs and you can decide which of them gives you a better output or let me say which one is of higher quality and then you can use that for a downstream analysis. You can also use Boost Code to get the completeness of the assembly. All right, so that's also helpful. I've covered some tutorials on Busco as well, so you can also check the description box for. Right, so basically, I have tutorials on how to evaluate genome assembly. So just check the description box, you'll find links to those videos. Now, we are dealing with a bacterial genome. And so after genome assembly, after getting your files and then uh, making sure that everything is okay, you can also perform genome annotation. You can use tools like Proca, you can use tools like Rust, you can also use the NCBI to which is PIGA to also perform genome annotation. So I've covered some tutorials on genome annotation. So if you're interested, check the description box, you'll find this to those videos. Or can also check this video right here.